What are complex power and power factor? And I think it's always best to start by thinking about the instantaneous power. So here's an equation for the instantaneous power in an AC circuit. There are three terms. And for details about this, check out the description below. You'll find other videos on the channel related to instantaneous power. You'll also find a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. So let's see what the values of P and Q are. Well, here they are here. They're the voltage times the current divided by two. And for P, it's multiplied by cos alpha and for Q by sine alpha. So what is this alpha? Well, it's the difference between the phases of the voltage and the current. So I've just drawn an example here of the voltage waveform and the current waveform in a circuit. And when you have capacitors and inductors in your circuit, these waveforms will not be at the same phase. And so here, for example, this one is a sine wave for the voltage and the current here is a cos wave. So these ones, as I've drawn them here, are 90 degrees out of phase. That is the alpha that we're talking about. And I always think when you're thinking about complex power and power factor, don't forget about what we're really talking about, which is the instantaneous power and these waveforms. So because of this P and Q relationship with the cos and the sine, you can see with some high school trigonometry that you can represent them with a triangle. So here we have Vm I m on two, that's just this one here. If you take the cos of that, then it is this length here, P. Uh, if you take the sine of it, then it is this length here, which is Q. And simply because of this ability to write it in terms of a triangle, that is what leads us to the idea of using complex representation for the power. And hence we get the idea that there is complex power. Of course, there is no complex power in the real world. This is the power that we have. This is the instantaneous power. This power is real. So I think it's very important not to get confused and to think that there's somehow a, an imaginary component to the power. It's simply because we can write it as a triangle here. And this triangle enables us with a complex representation to represent it with a what we call a real component and an imaginary component because we're using complex numbers here. Uh, of course, we, we think of complex numbers with what we call a real component and what we call an imaginary component. They are orthogonal uh, dimensions. And so here's this triangle here represented in the complex plane. And we often use the, the letter S where we put the P in the real component and the Q in the imaginary. But don't get fooled. This is not an imaginary power. Q is a real component of the instantaneous power. Um, also, other things to not get confused by, this S does not mean that it is the total power. So S, the magnitude of S is the length of this line here. That is not the total power. Sometimes people make that mistake. Of course, the instantaneous power is given by this expression here. If you want to, to understand the power over a period of time, for example, then you need to integrate this expression. It's not Vm I m divided by two. Uh, this is also not the peak power. It's not only some sort of concept of a total power, but it's also not the concept of a peak power either. The peak power is the peak of this expression here. Again, you can see other videos on the channel for more insights into this. Um, what about this power factor? Well, simply they are definitions. So cos of alpha is defined to be the power factor. Sine of alpha is defined to be the reactive factor. And again, for more information and insights into what reactive power is, uh, check out the description below. You'll find a video on reactive power. So why do we define power factor and reactive factor? Well, it gives us insights into our circuit. For example, if we have inductors in the circuit, they have a positive value of Q, and we call that a lagging power factor. If we have capacitors, they have a negative value of Q, and we call this a leading power factor. So in summary, complex power and power factor are simply definitions. 
They make some mathematical calculations easier, but it's certainly not the case that Q is in some sense imaginary or not real, and P is the only thing that's real uh, or something like that when we start thinking about complex numbers. Okay? They are simply a convenient mathematical notation that comes about because of this triangle relationship between two components in the instantaneous power equation. So hopefully this has given you more insights. If it has, please give the video a like with a thumbs up. It helps others to find the channel. Uh, of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And as I said, check out the description below. You'll find a web page with a complete categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.